let me ask you a question. Do you know what is the nightmare of a professor? I tell you, the first nightmare of a professor is to have to give a lecture immediately after lunch. <laughs> you have to give everybody awake, and that's hard. And the second nightmare of a professor is have to chair a session, which is the last session on a Sunday, <laughs> and get everybody interested. Right, dear dream catchers, we are coming to the last session of Dream Catchers Forum today, and we have listened to many examples of entrepreneurs having or trying to start a new business according to their passion and their innovation. We just finished hearing some successful individuals like Pony Ma, who got his Wells number five internet publicly listed company and his experience of that. And you naturally become all excited and ask the questions. What next? Where should I start? Where can I get some help? What resources are available out there in Hong Kong to get me started? Those are very relevant and very valid questions. Now, in Silicon Valley, starting in the 50s, nearly every new startup company started in the garage of the founder's home or most likely their parents' home. In Hong Kong, we live in the concrete blocks where we do not have garage. I know some of them call their office garage, but they are not garage. So should we start from a hub or from a pub? Or in Hong Kong, from a coffee hangout? Well, we, we are very pleased to have five entrepreneurial speakers in our session, trying to provide us some examples of what are available in town. I shall invite them individually to come on stage, and each uses not more than five minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, to share their experience, insights, or even resources they have to offer to you. I would then invite them all to come up stage together as a panel to answer any question you may have. I can tell you, it, was a night, it is a nightmare for a professor to moderate the last session, but the good news is, being the last session, although we've targeted to finish at 5.10, but being the last session, we are more flexible than any other earlier sessions of the day. <laughs> so, I will try my best this is still Sunday, and this is late, but I'll try to, uh, my best to, to finish on time, but at the same time, we are flexible. Now, our first speaker is Mr. David Fong, who is Managing Director of Hip Ching Hong, Hip Ching Hong Holding Limited. Hip Ching Hong has a large project in Wong Juk Kang, very close to Hong Kong U, called Genesis, which he would like to share with us. Let us welcome Mr. David Fong. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for staying behind uh, after Pony Mars session, which is exceptionally exciting. Uh, what I'm going to today going to share with you is uh, I just came back from Silicon Valley last week and uh, visited uh, the construction of the campus of Apple Computer, uh, Google, uh, Facebook, um, and a few others. I think it's not really about the size of its campuses or excitement or its scale. Like Apple Computer is building a five billion US dollars campus, which can possibly be the most expensive real estate campus in the world. 
And uh, what these complexes have in common are really workspace uh, and spaces for collaborations. And the designs are very much similarly such that a lot of the ideas can flow. Energy can flow, uh, people collide, a natural uh, collaboration can happen. I think we need spaces that ideas can flow and unintended uh, collaboration can happen. In Hong Kong, we all know that rent is high, uh, space is very limited, and uh, as uh, some of the earlier speakers have spoken, you know, they have very small space to start with, and that's okay. But as these companies grow big, if we don't provide them with a larger space, uh, space that they can expand, they're gonna go elsewhere. And uh, while, while we are finding the slide, I think uh, being in a high-tech uh, startup business, it's a very hard life. As earlier speaker have spoken, there is only 0.6% of success rate. And during which time, basically, you spend sleepless night. It's very high stress. You forego a lot of your other activities, traveling plans, time with your friends, with your families and the like. Uh, I'm just going to show you a few of the pictures of the uh, uh, high-tech com uh, campus. Uh, the left one on the top is the Apple New Campus, uh, done by Norman Foster, who happens to uh, design the Hong Kong airport. Uh, the Google Campus is going to have a big uh, uh, glass uh, covering of this campus. Uh, but then designed it by uh, Ingalls and Hathaways, which are uh, younger. And uh, the, the one on the left is the Facebook new campus uh, designed by Frank Geary, who happens to do a building on the peak. Uh, he is 80, uh, 86 years old. And uh, on the right is the infamous um, Facebook uh, orange crane where they do hackathon almost on a monthly basis, where uh, they form teams uh, amongst uh, workers from different departments where they are going to crank up new ideas, they're going to share, and they're going to present the ideas, and some of the successful ideas get funded by Facebook. So they really have huge campus and the environment for colliding ideas, collaboration, and the like. Uh, oops, I'm advancing a bit. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, some of the, the pictures inside the, the campus, uh, there are a variety uh, of spaces which are uh, very unconventional office like where. You know, your right brain, which is the logical side of your brain, uh, can be stimulated, as well as your, you know, left brain, which is your creative side of your brain, which, you know, being stimulated, and then sometimes ideas flow, you think out of the box, and you find an idea. Because like a lot of the inventions, uh, you know, whatever you can think of, kind of somebody have thought of it before. It's very hard to find out find new ideas. So some of the ideas are really accidents. You know, you, it's like a lot of the older invention, you discover it by uh, accidents or you discover it by uh, collaborating ideas with others. Okay, this is uh, Genesis, a building that we revitalized in uh, Wong Chok Hang, uh, Aberdeen, uh, taking advantage of, whoops, taking advantage of uh, uh, the Hong Kong government's uh, revitalization uh, of factory building scheme. And what we have in this building is that we do have a lot of space for young people to co uh, collaborate. We have a gym, we have a cafe, we have a, a very relaxing uh, you know, uh, room which is uh, 
The total common area is about 30,000 square feet where people can rest, they can sleep, uh, and, don't, and our property managers don't you know, you know, uh, get these people out after, after nine o'clock. You can work around the clock. And when you come lease the space, you know, uh, a lot of times they look at you and ask for, you know, what have you done before? How many years of experience do you have? Uh, what's your plan for the space and so on? So it's very difficult for a young startup to find affordable space. Uh, what we have here, we uh, offer uh, one third uh, the, the market rent uh, offered to uh, startup companies. Uh, we uh, gave uh, 10,000 square foot uh, to uh, Art Development Council where, you know, young people uh, can uh, come to uh, this building to rent a space where they can create the artwork uh, and, uh, and the visual arts, uh, whatever. And then we also have 10,000 square foot uh, for uh, uh, this um, uh, Youth Federation, where collaboration space is provided where young entrepreneurs can start uh, their business at one-third the market rent. Uh, you know, the art space is on the top left. On the right is a picture uh, where uh, Youth Federation is going to host about 70 uh, uh, startup companies uh, where they were going to have mentorship uh, uh, to mentors uh, their, their business. And uh, what I want to say is that high-tech business is really stressful. You really need to take care of your health. You need to relieve your stress. You need an environment where stress can be relieved, which is all common to all the major tech company campuses. Let me share a tragic story. Uh, everybody knows this company, Victoria's Secret. Uh, it was started in 1977 by a Stanford MBA, uh, Mr. Roy Raymond. And uh, he took $40,000 of his own money and he borrowed 40000 from relatives. With $80,000, he started Victoria's Secret. And then uh, this company he started at the Stanford uh, Shopping Center, his first store. In the first year, he made $500,000 US. He was really happy. And then he kept expanding uh, a few other stores and started his catalog business. And uh, as he grew, he made more money. And in about three years, this company, The Limited, which is a fashion chain in the United States, uh, bought him out for about $5 million. He was really excited from 80,000 turning to you know, uh, $4 million in just a couple of years. But uh, the company that uh, bought him out, uh, built on it, and in about another three years, the company uh, was worth $200 million. And psychologically, uh, he was very sad because he sold his company for $4 million, and three years later, it was $200 million. Uh, what actually happened is that he jumped off Golden Gate Bridge and died. Uh, it was a sad story. Uh, it's, it's really when you do a startup, you've got to be psychologically prepared. Not that he was not successful. He was successful turning $80,000 into $4 million. He should be very happy. But the fact if you sold out too early, you got so upset with yourself, you know, why didn't I keep building my business and not expanding it? So, you know, doing startup, you've got to be psychologically prepared. You need to take care of your health. You know, it's like candle burnings on both ends. If you're not careful, you, you can seriously damage yourself, damage your family relationship, and then you have to ask, is it really worth it? Um, so what I'm saying is that I hope you know, when we provide these uh, collaboration space, startup space, hubs and whatever, we hope to take the pressure and, the, and give you uh, some relief such that, you know, you can thrive your business. And thank you for listening.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll leave the questions and answer to the very end. Our second speaker is Mr. Victor Zhang, Executive Director of PUMQ, which is a project to recreate the space of the historical police residential blocks near Hong Kong U to become the home of many startups, especially in the field of arts, design, culture, and media. Let us welcome Victor. And Victor, you have at most 10 minutes. Good afternoon. Um, Professor Chen shared a secret with me. Uh, is that when I was in uh, the engineering faculty he, during my undergraduate, he, he is indeed my professor. And uh, so I share the kind of same nightmare of him uh, to speak in front of you after the lunch. And, but then uh, we remember Professor Chen gave me 10 minutes. He's it, even a bigger uh, nightmare. After 30 years of graduation and uh, face this time, it's like submitting another coursework for him. And then I go back to the uh, original question of this session and uh, where the PMQ is a hub or a pop. Uh, indeed, this question is very close to the heart of PMQ. And uh, not just because PMQ geographically is in the center of Soho next to Lan Kwai Fong. Uh, which are already very famous for the beer, food, and also chic lifestyles. Uh, also, pop, in this origin, actually means public house, where the UK villagers uh, gather inside uh, to spend their spare times. And, and in these uh, golden days, pubs actually brew their own beer, and also, people call themselves pop crawler, uh, visiting one after the others. But on the other hand, hub. Hub is, can be described as the focal point and uh, center of certain activities that uh, carried out inside. And it is five years ago when the government has a, has a vision to transform the former police mayor quarters into a creative hub where we can attract creators and designers and create entrepreneurs to join PMQ and a lot of happenings, uh, creative happenings inside PMQ. Um, a charitable foundation called Musketeer took up that challenge and immediately looked for any uh, critical success factors for this project. Uh, one thing is very important, we, we found that we must create a market for all the design business inside PMQ, and that's why we need to generate the traffic and the people required to form this market. And so from the very beginning, PMQ stressed a lot on public and which we can offer a lot of public enjoyment and also uh, activities inside. Uh, backward, and uh, forward. <laughs> okay. I came across many people uh, telling me that uh, PMQ, is, PMQ exists for a while, and, but indeed, actually, PMQ has just opened for one year. And in the heritage context of PMQ, we were the Central School Campus, which is now the um, Queen's College, and which was torn down after World War II. And most of the existing buildings structure now is the result of the conservation uh, of the former police mayor quarters. And you can see during these two eras, the, they have very well-defined user, being the students and teachers and also the residents of the quarters. 
they have never been as welcoming to the public as now. And the challenge being, we have to transform the existing uh, building from a single function home use residential complex into a multi-functional uh, use. We are very fortunate that we, during the process, we have worked very closely together with government departments like Heritage Office, Create Hong Kong Office, and also the Architectural Service Department. And indeed, after these years of operation, we have won quite a lot of uh, architectural award for this transformation. And, for, and in this year of operation, we, we always stick with our original belief is to draw the best uh, designer and creative entrepreneurs into PMQ. On the other hand, we must be very selective and uh, so that we can we'll pick the winners and then they can uh, uh, have good prospects to success. And we launched a campaign of We Are PMQ, and uh, in the following video, you can uh, hear what uh, uh, the designer feel about PMQ. The video, please. I think the, the biggest reason for me to be here in PMQ is to have access to all of these people. It gives us a good place to display our products, so I think it's very helpful to me. I think I can directly see these designs and get direct feedback. This is very inspiring. We will get a lot of different feedback. We can slowly move on to the same place. Of course, I think this is a lot of different projects. I think we have a lot of contribution. For example, the projects are a lot bigger. PMQ, every time we have these events, it will give us 即係 tenant 啦，或者係管理設計師咧喺度開鋪嘅人咧，有一啲活動我哋係可以同佢去接觸，或者都會俾我哋參與嘅。I myself enjoy the exhibition very much. It definitely make this、uh, compound more dynamic and interesting. And by having different ex exhibitions, it attracts、uh, people from different trades coming to this building. 咁亦都係好幫到我哋設計師啦。你 design 咗啲 products， 究竟你同唔同範疇嘅人嗰、那個 interaction 係可以點樣做法？同其他設計師合作係誒、呃、好玩嘅，即係其實係呢啲係我哋嚟咗 PMQ 之後先至有嘅機會。其實 PMQ 係因為可以凝聚到好多唔同嘅本地設計師喺度。By having different、uh, designers, we get different、uh, inspirations from them.、Uh, it's a perfect place. You know, it's centrally located. The buildings are fantastic. The type of people that are in here and, and doing creative work are very, very interesting. It really helps me to get to find information、uh, about suppliers, about production, about like where to go, good printers, everything. So it definitely helps a lot. To me. We are here to you. Since we opened, we have received overwhelming demand from the market, and currently,、uh, for for space of PMQ, currently we actually offer time limited、uh, pop up spaces for those who cannot get in the first batch, and we give them unit and space so that they can test the market inside PMQ. And as a new initiative, PMQ is going to offer. Co-working spaces 
for for uh, startups, and in in a uh, so as they can um, uh, build their business uh, in a collaborative uh, working environment with other uh, creators and designers uh, in other sectors, and in more specifically, PMQ has collaborated with um, a an accelerator come investor, Bling. Bling has a vision that Hong Kong is probably the best place in the world in the Internet of Things kickoff. And um, so Bling is actually uh, offering a, an accelerator program uh, from 20 to 24 weeks uh, in which they can groom and, and nurture uh, this new startup uh, for fundraising and for pitching and, and, and produce their, develop their own concept. And in fact, now PMQ has got seven of these companies and uh, being having the first company raised 150,000 US uh, through a crowdfunding platform. Next. Um, after one year of operation, I would like to share with you three sets of uh, figures. First, we have so far attained the total, a total uh, number of visits uh, up to four million people. And by calculating our maximum capacity, probably we can still have about 40% uh, rooms to grow before people find it too cramped to visit PMQ. And second is um, we have conducted the visitor survey and found that 85% of them gave us a seven points uh, or above in our 10 point scale. In, uh, so in terms of uh, overall customer satisfaction, it gives a very good starting point to, to improve in the, in the future. And third, is also very important is that we have so far got 400 events to be organized in PMQ. And indeed, this event is at themselves the main draw or main vehicle to bring the public into PMQ. And so, and actually last week, we have a one event, a talk conducted by Peter Till, who is the co-founder of uh, LinkedIn, and also uh, uh, the author of the book Zero to One. He uh, gave us a very good suggestion that for any startup, uh, it should be uh, the best, and also it is, has to be able to stay and to last. And so in PMQ, we also transform this vice so that we, we need to become the best creative hub. And thank you. Thank you, Victor. Well, I apologize for the uh, problem with the video. This is a good example for any entrepreneurs. Unexpected things happen, and you have to cope with it. Um, our next speaker, our third speaker, is Ms. Cherry Chan, person in charge of the mills, yet another innovative initiative driven by the Namphong Group to encourage new innovative dream catchers to realize their dreams in the field of textile and related industry. Cherry, please. Great, thank you, Paul. So very hard acts to follow. Um, Genesis was very exciting, and uh, I'm personally a big fan of PMQ. So I'm here to talk about the mills. Uh, it's a new project. It's targeted to open late 2017, early 2018, we're hoping. Um, it's right now a warehouse in Chunwan. Uh, if you're familiar with the Chunwan neighborhood, it's near Discovery Park. Uh, if you walk from the station towards Discovery Park, we're another three minutes away. 
And um, what we are calling the mills a heritage meets fashion community business. So I can tell you a little bit more about what we plan to do. Uh, voice control, next slide, please. The mills was Hong Kong's largest cotton yarn spinner uh, when it was operating in the 60s. We were part of uh, the Nanfeng Textiles Group, and Nanfeng was the biggest cotton spinner at that time. So in the building, we had the latest technology, and we had 24-hour production. Those were all um, cutting-edge uh, differences that we made to the industry back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, the mill stopped operating as a textile business uh, in the early 2000s, and it's now, um, as I said, a warehouse. And we're in the process of recreating it into um, a very exciting space with three parts. One we call the Mills Fabrica, which is a fashion incubator. Uh, the Mills Gallery, uh, which is a museum quality exhibition space uh, exploring the dialogue between um, fashion and art and culture. And then we have the Mills shop floor, uh, which we uh, plan to turn into an immersive um, shopping retail experience focused on um, the maker's culture and uh, Hong Kong fashion brands. Next slide, please. So here, uh, since we're talking about Hubble Pub and space where you can recreate, I'm going to focus on the Mills Fabrica. Uh, it's a cutting-edge playground of incubation and invention for fashion startups. And here, fashion is very broadly defined. So conventional fashion brands, so we're thinking men's wear, women's wear, children's wear, bags, jewelry, anything that you put on your body, plus tech. So Fash tech is a, is a new word. Um, there's a lot of wearable tech going on. And there's also a lot of, uh, we find a lot of smart textile um, projects going on. So we welcome all of these uh, businesses to join us. And so what do we provide? Mentorship, um, network, community, services, affordable rent. So mentors, uh, we're gathering a lot of um, experienced fashion professionals to help out with the newer businesses. So anywhere ranging from people who've worked in buying at Lane Crawford & Joyce, so they can tell you what your range should look like and uh, how you should price up your range, the calendar you need to work with, and then also people from uh, great schools like Central St. Martins who are going to help with your actual you have, uh, your product and um, PR, you know, what your lookbook should look like, how, how you can take your business forward. Network, so um, similar to G uh, Genesis and PMK, we believe that if we put a great group of creatives together, you will all figure out what to do with each other. I've visited other incubators and I've heard great stories where in, in uh, one designer ended up having her showroom designed by the designer's next door's boyfriend who is an architect. So there's a lot of creative energy going on. I think if we put everybody together, great things will happen. Um, so that's the community and also the network. We, uh, the mentors will also be able to, to help you reach out to the showrooms that you need to visit, the retailers, that you need, to, you need to get to. Hassle-free services, I think this is one of the things that we could do for entrepreneurs. So you don't end up spending half a day filling out a shipping document and instead of doing really your design and your sales and your lookbook. So we, can, we could help you out with those things and, and you know, make sure that your business plan is working. We have uh, great um, companies lined up with us, such as KPMG and Ernst & Young, who are uh, pitching in to help with the business side of things. And affordable rent, um, this will definitely be below market, and we're going to lump in all the services that we talked about. So there's a full package that we can offer to you. Uh, next slide. So uh, if you have an idea, you or your friends have an idea already, have a business um, that you want to share with us, we are hosting Pitch Day uh, in August this year. We've started recruitment. So you have a fashion concept, a startup that you think you can disrupt business as usual, that you think the market is missing, you're solving a problem. Uh, we, the, first, the winner gets over $200,000 uh, $200, in cash and cash price. Yeah, we're a little more generous than that. Um, uh, and, and business development support. Um, I think one of the great things that we can do for you, we'll, we'll take you on a business development trip to, to the US. So if you're in tech, we're going to arrange for you to see the people you need to see in Silicon Valley. If you're in fashion, we're taking you to showrooms and retailers um, in New York, so you can really get going. And uh, all the finalists, we have uh, seven other finalists, um, and uh, we'll all be rewarded uh, with $10,000 and some mentorship hours. 
So stay tuned. We're still a project in the making. So please follow us, like us. Uh, we have our own website, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So and uh, look for me. I'm I'm happy to t to talk to anyone who has an idea. Thank you. Thank you, Cherry. Thank you. Give it to him. Our next speaker is synonymous with creativity, social innovation, art and culture in Hong Kong. Ms. Ada Wong is a lawyer by training, but an innovator, an entrepreneur, and a mad person in reality. Mad stands for make a difference. She is also the convener and director of Good Lab. Ada, please. Thank you, Paul. I'll make sure this finishes in eight minutes, although I'm, I'm not an obedient student, I don't have five slides, I have 19. But um, bear with me, so first slide. No, this is not the first slide. The first slide doesn't look like this, come on, give me the first slide. Um, I would like to talk about the Good Lab. The Good Lab is in uh, Cheng Sa Wan, so I'm very happy to hear the mills because the mills is also in the western part of Kowloon and the New Territories. So this is the Good Lab. This is Hong Kong's social innovation hub. We are in Cheng Sa Wan, and we have 20,000 square feet. Uh, this is uh, one of the first co-working spaces in Hong Kong. Next. Um, the co-working space is not a subdivided room space, so it's not a Tong Fong space, but it's an open office space, and I think building communities is very, very important. The co-working culture is about collaborating, it's about participation and openness. So here we have 200 plus members, um, some are full-time, some are part-time, some are startups, and some are individuals, and they are here, and they collaborate, and they find synergies. Next. We support them by providing space, first of all, and secondly, provide them with a big pool of professional mentors. Um, whether they are early stage startups or whether they are into scaling, we've got the right person to help them. Because um, this is about trust. In a co-working culture, it's not about competition, it's about collaboration and trust. So, next slide. This will be very quick. We can do that because we have seven founders who are key players in the social innovation space, and they are dialogue experience, which um, provide really respectable job opportunities for the visually and hearing impaired. Next. Make a Difference Institute is something I founded. It's for nurturing creativity and innovation in young people, and Hong Kong U is also a collaborator and partner of MAD. Next. Social Enterprise Summit. Next. Hong Kong Social Entrepreneurship Forum. You see how quick I can be. Uh, next, Social Ventures Hong Kong. Um, they're very famous because they now have um, Green Monday um, to promote green and uh, um, veggie eating, and also Diamond Cab and um, Guang Fong, uh, Light Bee. Um, very, very interesting social um, startup. Next, Education for Good, which promotes education um, for social entrepreneurs. Next. And Solution on Wheels. This is a social media which suggests solutions instead of complaints and they want to solve Hong Kong social problems. So with these partners, with these founders at a good lab, we, we are able to provide um, support to these startups. And with learning and incubation programs, responding to the needs of entrepreneurs and social innovators. We are here for three years already. So in the three years, I've been wondering what kind of incubation program is best for Hong Kong startup scene, which is actually very, very young, and especially for social startups. And we are lucky that um, this year we have Unlimited Hong Kong as a partner. Unlimited is um, well known in the UK. They founded in the year 2000. They've supported 12, over 12,000 social entrepreneurs already. But they give very, very little funding, almost nothing to the entrepreneurs because they believe that a network and mentorship is actually more important than the money. So um, this is in Hong Kong now. Just to give you an example of who works at a good lab, um, this pair, the next slide please, 
the next slide. Yes, this is Woodin Ross, just joined Good Lab about three months ago. They were accountants, so I think they got the the uh, each when they were 28, 29, and they see a problem in Hong Kong. The problem being it is actually very difficult to get honest and dedicated workmen to do small decorations and repairs for your home. So they decided to do an online platform to be the middle person, to give quotations. They've got a pool of very, very dedicated uh, Sifu, 60 Sifu, and they have, um, um, so they have an online platform, they provide quotations, uh, so they are very efficient, whereas Sifu cannot really do this very well. And then, um, after Sifu completes the job, they get feedback from the clients. And they've done um, over a thousand matches already, and I think there is big potential, because for small repairs under like $250,000, it's very, very difficult to get honest, honest uh, and good workmanship. So um, we are helping them to launch and also to scale. Next, please. Learning is very important at Good Lab. Um, we have um, many, many themes. Lately, we have um, done a number of talks on the sharing economy. So it's not just Airbnb and not just about Uber, but there are many, many opportunities for sharing economy development in Hong Kong. Next. Active aging, uh, need I say more? After we saw the horrendous photos of the last few weeks, we know that we can provide a better life for our elderly people. And um, we do our best in getting um, different experts, people who know about the innovations in um, aging uh, to come to the Good Lab to give talks. We also do training for government, businesses, and NGOs. Interestingly, the Civil Service Training Institute from the Hong Kong government is very interested in coming to the Good Lab. We've done training for them for the last two years. Um, they enjoy uh, working with our members and understanding why social in innovation is important for policymakers like them. Okay, um, this session is about what's next. So, final thoughts. Um, a co-working space can be very secluded. It can be, um, it, it can be totally segregated from the local community. But I would hope that there could be different levels of engagement uh, for either the core group or people who lurk outside. Uh, I hope that in the next few years, Good Lab is into our fourth year now, so we hope that we can bring the people in the periphery to the core. So this is a mission. So all of you, hopefully, you can come to Good Lab and spend some time there. Next. Um, and then, incubation. Um, some thoughts about incubation programs in Hong Kong these days. They are quite a lot, very encouraging. But they are a zero-sum game. So you enter competition, you either get $500,000 or you get nothing. Uh, this is very much a copy of Silicon Valley, where the winner takes all. But I think that in Hong Kong, the incubation scene is very young. We need to provide the infrastructure, the professional mentorship, and also a culture for entrepreneurship to grow. I once asked a, a big group of um, young people who came to the Good Lab to, for a visit, about 100 of them from the Federation of Youth Groups, uh, secondary students, I asked, who would like to be an entrepreneur when they graduate from university? Of the 100 people, only one, one raised his hand. Very, 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 very um, uh, courageous, too. So, um, with few people um, doing startups and there's a big chance of failure, we should prepare them. So, in Good Lab, we had a session called Philosophy, not philosophy, Philosophy, where members share their. Um, Stories of failure, and hopefully we learn from each other. Next. Good Lab is about social change. So not just for entrepreneurship, and we believe that entrepreneurship is the driver for social change. And last, last, next. And this is a space where minds and actions meet for a much better Hong Kong. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ada. Ada is such a good person, and the name Good Lab is just exactly right for her. Well, we come to our last but not least speaker, but certainly.
He is the youngest among all the speakers today and is Vincent Fong. Vincent is the chairman of the Kairos Society of Hong Kong. To me, Vincent represents our future for Hong Kong. Let us welcome Vincent Fong. All right, who's under 25 here? Please stand up. Please stand up. All of you, yep. Awesome, awesome. So, where it keeps standing, please do a quick stretch. All right, because I'm talking to you guys specifically, and I need your attention. So, you guys can sit down now and enjoy what I'm about to present. So, Cairo Society is an organization where we bring entrepreneurs around the world together and we try to develop and connect them. Imagine all the big leaders of today and if they're all best friends 20, 25 years ago, how powerful would that be? So before I further dive in, let me give you a little background about myself. Next, please. So uh, my first company was Find My Song. I started this in my freshman year. It's an online music collaborative platform for musicians. So it's like eHarmony for musicians, where you need a guitar player if you're a singer. You can actually make the music on our site and protect your copyright. And we raised around half a million dollars, and we are one of the most popular music collaboration platform. Then moving forward, More Than Shelters is one of a refugee camp in Jordan, where we put 3D printing or fabrication technologies into improving the life of refugees or one of the early innovators there. Then is Cairo Society, which is obviously what I'm going to dive into in a bit. And Second Home, which is one of my latest venture, is a second-hand marketplace for people to buy and sell furniture. Now, why did I tell you all of this? Next, please. The reason is, I did all of this while I was in college. In fact, I just graduated two weeks ago, and my parents are incredibly proud of me for not dropping out and actually getting my degree. <laughs> now, that's the power of youth. You, maybe half the room, are under the age of 25. You guys have the potential on creating the world's next big thing. Look at the young CEOs, look at the Forbes 30 under 30. There are billionaires nowadays. This was not possible back in the days. And with all the speakers earlier, like all the co-working space, Science Park, Government, Invest HK, all these groups have provided really good infrastructure for you guys to take advantage of it. But at the end of the day, it is people that's going to change this. And that's what we're here for, to develop these talent, to get all these software so we can plug it into these amazing co-working space and all these government entities. So, in Kairos, we have around 400 fellows in 52 countries, and the ventures have collectively raised over $33 million and more. And we're not really trying to brag and say, oh, we're really cool entrepreneurs, but all we want to do is we want to be leaders of our country. We want to demonstrate to show people that we have the potential and we can do it. So, obviously, each region in Kairos is different. Some regions, such as America, is a little bit more developed, and you have some regions in Africa that's a little bit less developed, and Hong Kong kind of falls in between two. So um, we kind of did a big launch for Kairos last year, and we have formed partnerships with five universities, uh, with government entities like Invest HK, Cyberport, Science Park. We all have really good talks and very, very supportive ecosystem, and I think it's fantastic, which is the key step to move this forward. Now, the next step really comes down to this. How many people can we get involved in this ecosystem? How many people can come and actually create ideas? Because when we first started, we're like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna use the same criteria as what people do in America. So uh, we're gonna find people with a company that already have a revenue model or raise funding already. And it was quite difficult because if you go to the startup events in Hong Kong, they're really not that young. They are in their late 20s towards like 30s. 
and with my criterion saying under the age of 25, it makes our job incredibly difficult. So after working with our team, working with headquarters, we decided to shift our approach from simply just picking these people towards cultivating them. So what we do, we host a lot of different events, a lot of different hackathons and whatnot. But the main thing for us right now, next slide, please. And again, sorry, is we need your help. So our team, we are working very hard day and night to seek out the different talents, entrepreneurs with a dying passion to start this. And we have all these hardware in Hong Kong. And please, if each one of you know someone that falls into this range under the age of 25, that's either an engineer or someone who's a very good entrepreneur, please send it to this email, vince.fong at kairosociety.org or earl.ng at kairosociety.com. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, don't go away. Now I would like to invite all the speakers to come up here to answer question. Vince, why don't you sit here? Right, at the very end. I, I will sit on that end and uh, we'll sit according to the order we have presented so that you won't be confused. So um, would Victor, would you like to sit there? Yes, and David? Yes, that's great. Now, just like uh, before, this is the way that we're going to run this. If you have any questions, there are two microphones standing over there, and uh, you are welcome to come to the microphones and um, queue up. Then we'll give you some time to ask your question. And the question can be posed to anyone or all the speakers here. But while you are thinking, let me ask our speakers here, uh, starting from um, David. Now, if I'm interested in Genesis, uh, are there co workspace there that I can apply any resources that one can go for? And what's the procedure very quickly? Yeah, I think uh, what we do is that uh, we are not in the tech business, so it's better left to people who knows the tax business. So we have commissioned the space to uh, our development council and also youth federation. So you can apply through them and then they select. I see, that's Thank very you. good. Thank you. Now, um, Victor, for PMQ, what are the possibilities and resources that young people can yes. go for? Uh, as mentioned in the slide uh, presentation, we are just open, uh, going to offer a co-working space too. And so rental can be in the form of a desk and uh, with time in terms of uh, weeks, months, or, or year. And other than the co-working space, we also dedicate some uh, space for, for the acceleration program, as mentioned, uh, specifically in the, uh, in the Internet of Things uh, area. Okay, thank you. Now, Cherry, the meals, I understand that it's some time before you become operational and you have a uh, pitch and um, people can apply for co in a competition to win some yes. startup money. What else do you offer to uh, young people now? Uh, we're still in the planning. Um, we'll have uh, art exhibits to get uh, the community interested in fashion as a cultural element as dialogue between fa uh, fashion, art, and culture. We're going to have pop-up events. So some of them are for fun, just to get everybody warmed up and interested. And we'll also have uh, education seminars with the likes of, uh, as I mentioned, Central St. Martins and other great fashion institutions. Okay. Now, Ada, for Good Lab. If I'm a good person wanting to join the Good Lab, what do I do? I just walk in? Just walk in. Uh, just pay $500 per year, and you can join all our events. Or if um, you want to do something, you are still doing a job or you're still at school, um, you just want to be at Good Lab on a part-time basis, uh, I think um, you can be at Good Lab for 20 hours for less than uh, $400 per month. So this is actually cheaper than uh, sitting at Starbucks, right? And you have free coffees too. Oh you? yes, we have really good free coffee and fair trade coffee. Wow. And tea bags too. Wow, so Starbucks 
and Pacific Coffee, you have to think again. Uh, Vince, you, for, for you, if people want to join Kairos Society, um, what do they do? They write to you? So uh, it's free, so we don't charge anything. We're a nonprofit. Um, all you need to do is go to kairosociety.org, or you can send me an email, or you can find a gentleman in the red shirt over there, and we'll talk to you. And we're also, we have sub chapters in all the different universities, so please reach out. I will personally pick up the phone call and have hours of phone call with you. Yes, I was, when I was asking those questions, I was worrying that nobody's come up to the microphone. And I'm so pleased to see that you come up to the microphone. <laughs> Otherwise, I will be asking questions all along. Please, go ahead. Uh, yes, hello, I'm Crystal. I'm a PhD student in the University of Hong Kong now. And actually, I, after listening to all the sections today, and actually I have a, a questions in my mind because now we are having this talk, forum or talk uh, today, or it's about entrepreneurship and or it's about young people. And, and it seems that practice is very important and experience is very important. And, but now we choose a university for today's talk and I was wondering, what's the core value of university students? Because when we are staying in university, it seems that coursework and no practical experience. Now we are just telling students to go out and get for practice experience. So why we are still staying in university? And another thing is about the, I think it's very interesting for the last section is that the physical space matters. And, uh, and initially, interesting to find that they also call their company campus or develop place or design place core campus. So I was wondering what is the core value of the university? What's the core value of our university students? Yeah. If just going out is it so that is that important why we are need to be recruited here? Yeah. Thank you. Well Vince I'll I'll take the first one and you yes. guys can take care of the physical space. So what you asked, that was what I asked myself every single day for the last four years. Um, you know, there's actually a lot of value in a university. Number one is kind of the approach towards learning. It doesn't, sometimes the skill might not be as practical, but as you kind of do the logic and do the thinking, it actually helps a lot. That's actually incredibly practical. And number two is network. Um, there's no better time to meet the co-founders, meet your partners in universities because you're kind of in the same level ground. Because once you're out of college, everybody kind of have this, oh, what, how are you going to benefit me? How am I going to benefit you? And the last thing is you really get four years to have no baggage. You don't have to pay rent. You're just sleeping in a dorm room. You have a lot of free time. You can go to the beach if you want. That's the best time for you to actually try different things. and even start a business like you can you don't need to work work to get experience you can start working on your own while you're in university which is exactly what I did by doing part-time at the same time start my business yes well a, a correction uh, for Vince he actually pays rents but he doesn't know about it <laughs> uh, any other uh, yeah, I, I want to share my own experience I graduated during the time when China, China opened its door. And then when I go back to, to China and people grumbling to me and told me that, you know, uh, actually the first batch of uh, witches in China is ex-prisoners. And I asked why. It's because the, the open door policy actually gave them chance they have nothing to lose. They, they didn't have a, a job after their prison. And they, so they, they enter into small business and become rich and become entrepreneur. And then when I ca ca came back to Hong Kong U for my MBA studies, and the professor told me, you probably, when you graduate, you are still being employed because you have huge opportunity costs to lose when you engage in your own business. And, and, not, and not hit to me. And even though I didn't stop trying to innovate inside within my, my job um, uh, scope, but um, I become more realized that even when I was the principal of uh, uh, the largest design institute in Hong Kong, 
our student tends, our graduates tends to, to um, start their own business uh, more eager than university graduates. But the, the class of this kind of session is to tell you that um, uh, you, everybody should have the passion, uh, their own dream. But the university studies actually gave us um, more mileage to go. Because when the, um, the others try to start their own business, or maybe they get a very immediate success, but they would face very difficult problem that they cannot solve because they didn't, just didn't have the general intelligence in the middle of their business development. So university graduate actually, you own all the necessary ingredient uh, after the, 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 the course. And so I would say, by all means, try your, your best to, to, to start your own um, journey. Yes. Thank you. Um, as a professor, I shouldn't answer this question because there seems to be a conflict of interest. <laughs> However, as a person, I always ask myself, why am I doing what I'm doing at, F at every single stage? And being able to ask that, that question, I think it means that you're serious about your life. And keep asking that question, you may have a different answer from your friends next to you. You have to judge what is the value of how you spend your life as you are now. Now, Amrita, are you going to ask a question? Introduce yourself and ask the question. Okay, so I'm Amrita. I have been with uh, Professor Paul Chung to Israel and to like see a, different, a lot of different startups, co-working spaces. All of you have described how your co-working spaces are there and they seem to be quite similar to each other, especially in terms of maybe the only difference I can see is the focus, like some are for arts and cultures, while others focusing on fashion. As a future entrepreneur, if I become one, why should I choose your co-working space for me to start my company? Thank you. <laughs> right, good question. Uh, let me take a shot at that. Um, I think uh, in Hong Kong uh, real estate landscape, a lot of landlords, you know, do these conventional buildings, curtain wall buildings, um, first class um, property management service. They don't understand young people. I think uh, the whole the ecology needs to change. Property management, uh, air conditioning times. We don't charge extra if you. Uh, you know, uh, turn on your air conditioning, you know, past eight o'clock, uh, property managers don't hassle you if you dress like, you know, very little, or you dress uh, like very casual, they don't treat you like a thief, you know. So our property management teams are very young. Uh, they are with you. Uh, they can provide the services uh, that you may need. Uh, so it's, we have to break out from the conventional uh, property, man property management style. At the same time, I think uh, we want to create our buildings full of energy, where building, you know, breathes and lives, and uh, such that young people can learn from each other, can form partnership, pick the teammates, play, uh, compete, hack and so on. So uh, I think we have created uh, the environment where, you know, it's like a forest where weeds or trees or flowers can, can bloom and grow. Ada, you have the mic. Yes, I, I want to answer that. I can't convince you, but I would like to invite you to a tour of the Good Lab tomorrow so that you can decide for yourself. Uh, each co-working space has its own chemistry and, and vibes, and you have to understand whether you like it or not. At The Good Lab, we don't just have social entrepreneurs, but we have tech entrepreneurs, and we have all kinds of entrepreneurs, and people uh, are very happy to talk to each other, and to share, uh, to share ideas. Um, if you don't want to talk to anybody, I think you don't belong to a co-work space. So um, just, um, and, and actually, if you want to start a business, you don't have to join a co-work space. You can start at home. You can start right now. Great. Thank you. Cherry? 
Um, I think my answer is uh, come talk to me. If you have a fashion-related idea, we can talk about it. I'll tell you what I ended up doing yesterday evening. Um, there was a fashion designer who called me up after I visited the boutique that carries her brand and said, well, you know, I'd like to meet you. I'd like to talk about my business. And I thought I was going to have a 20, 30-minute conversation with her. I ended up spending two hours with her, trying on the clothes, checking out how it's made, telling her the buttonhole it's, you know, is, is wrong, the fit is a little tight, you know, but you know, don't, don't, don't leave your factory because you're very small and there aren't a lot of people who are going to make your clothes. So you actually should pay the factory more and like be really nice to the seafood. Like a lot of like practical issues that we can work through. So if that's what you're looking for, I'm here for you. Uh, Victor, you have the mic. Um, I think first of all is uh, the co-working space has to uh, build its own uh, brand and create a kind of uh, reputation that generate uh, a much larger, larger demand than it can provide and create a kind of scarcity. The, the reason why we need scarcity is because it's only under this situation that we can choose. And, and you know what? Immediately after we, we open PMQ, we always need to talk with our, our tenant and somehow they, they treasure not because they are um, located in PMQ, they can enter into PMQ, but they treasure the quality of the other tenants. That really helps them because we, we create a kind of peer learning and peer supporting environment. And not, for, not to forget, it's also about the potential for, for collaboration. And um, so we treasure a lot of uh, the participation and co-creation within PMQ. Thank you. Now, are there anyone who wish to ask a question? Peter. Well, my name is Peter Liu, and as you can see, I am slightly more than 25 years old. <laughs> um, that's why I allow the young people to ask questions first. Uh, my question to the expert panelists up on the stage are, <clears throat> I know it's important to to nurture the young generation because they are our future. Our retirement really depends on them. Um, on the other hand, I was slightly over 25 and not, hopefully not going to die that soon. So any uh, particular ideas on <clears throat> how we can encourage the collaboration between the young and the more mature generation as opposed to the young only the young people understand the young people, so you work alone in an incubator by your own group. And we, the more senior people, uh, remain uh, still at the other end, will never have a chance to understand what you think. Likewise, young people may not understand what the older generation's uh, thought process and needs are. So any ideas on kind of fostering a, a more collaborative approach because it affects the society now. You can see the divide. Thank yes. you. Very good question. Uh, very quick answer. Anyone? Uh, Ada first. Um, I do see a generational disconnect um, in Hong Kong society. Um, and I think that um, we should do more to um, find ways so that you know, the different generations can collaborate to make uh, Hong Kong better. Um, at the Good Lab, uh, I have never stressed young entrepreneurs. Uh, I see entrepreneurs of every age. I have seen an entrepreneur who is 65, and he said, I want to make my years count. So I don't think of how old I am, but I just want to find something meaningful to do, and so he's starting a business. So I have seen early retirees, uh, people who, uh, there were a couple of people who left the government, um, uh, and they are uh, in their early 50s. And so they are starting a website um, for older people. So there are lots of opportunities, and I don't think you think about age. Good point. Vincent, you are most qualified to answer that question. There, there, there's definitely a difference in age, in my opinion. Um, I think the main thing is to form the relationship more of a mentor-mentee relationship. Uh, oftentimes, young people lack the experience in certain fields. Um, and for a young entrepreneur, we have a lot of different ideas and whatnot, but to get someone back on track in terms of execution 
it's really good to have someone who's a little bit older and a little bit more mature. And um, that's why I think mentor programs are great, which we provide in Kairos. Uh, number two, also you can see uh, for young tech companies, they usually uh, form a board of director where everybody is a little older and a little bit more mature, a little bit more experienced. Right, Cherry, quick one, I quick think, answer. Uh, yes, uh, especially for creative types, uh, I think uh, the younger entrepreneurs can benefit with partnering with older entrepreneurs, perhaps becoming business partners, uh, to get them grounded, get them you know, working to a calendar, get them working through more adult issues of you know, finance and, and all, the, all, the, all the things that an entrepreneur might find boring but are essential to a business. I mean, look at Facebook, there's you know, Cheryl Schleinberg is really you know, the CEO and, and the nanny of the company, in my opinion. And you know, there's Eric Schmidt at Google. So I think businesses can really use experience to help them grow. Yes. Now, I just want to add, um, just, I think both sides has to learn to be humble. On the one hand, the older people can be mentors, but the younger generation can be mentors for us too. To, to, I can assure you that to be with the younger generation, it, their energy will help us to stay young. Um, I can see that we already run out of time, so I would like to invite you all to thank our uh, speakers today for sharing. I would like to invite all the speakers to go back downstairs because down into the audience because we are going to share with you a two minutes video of what happened today. So we are going to review what happened, what had happened today before I invite Professor Paul Tam to say a few words. Dream catches. Dream catches. The Dream catches is great. I mean, it's, uh, it's a super interesting event like this. If you leave forever. Before I let you go, I would like to invite a very entrepreneurial old person who is the vice president of research, um, Professor Paul Tam, to say a few words on behalf of the university. Paul, please. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Uh, I'm also Paul. I'm actually a very serious person. Uh, uh, dream catchers. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, the um, students uh, in the journalism and uh, media Stud uh, studies center for producing this nice video. Uh, as you can see, it has been a long day, uh, starting at 10 o'clock this morning, and it is a Sunday. But uh, you can uh, also feel um, the energy uh, throughout the day, and it's still running high. 
Now, this is only the beginning. Today's forum is the um, inaugural event of Dreamcatchers. Um, this is uh, Hong Kong Youth's new initiative for innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, there will be many more forums, um, mixers, events, hub um, portals, uh, marketplaces to come. Uh, we will be also launching our innovation commons. But we need you to keep the entrepreneurial uh, culture and the spirit. Um, I would like to take this opportunity also to thank our 67 speakers, our patrons and sponsors, the many colleagues and 60 student hosts who worked so hard. And most of all, you, our 1,000 participants. Uh, I hope to see you all again in yet another Dreamcatchers event soon. I was told by uh, Paul Jung that a happy hour is going to start uh, immediately after this, so it's me standing between you and the beer. <laughs> so let us continue networking, sharing over a glass of beer, and uh, this echoes well, uh, this session here is both a hub and a pub. Thank you. Thank you. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we have spent an entire day here at University of Hong Kong around the Grand Hall area. And I'm sure, like one of the uh, students just asked this question, you would wonder, why the hell are you here? Was it time well spent? I cannot answer that question, but I can share with you the objective of Dreamcatchers Forum, which is written in your, on the front page of your program. It says the following. If in five or ten years' time, you come back and tell us how today has changed your life, then together we have made it. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for sharing and spending this day with us at University of Hong Kong. 500 bottles of beer is waiting outside for you. Thank you.